one second. Okay, they're all good, but the experience of a Pokemon game can be bad. And Game Freak tends to ruin Pokemon games. That's what this is going to be about, okay? Let me know what you think in, in the description. So again, I don't have gameplay for this. Maybe I'll open up Mario Maker, freaking die a couple times so pokemon can be really good at some stuff and they get some really good ideas without breaking their game breaking the concept that is pokemon so that's that's not what this is about what pokemon and game Freak just suddenly suck at doing is promoting their game advertising their game getting you hyped for their game it really sucks it sounds like a random point but you know if you ask the majority of people the generation that they hate the most which i'm not saying it's a bad game is gen 7 they've been doing themes for each generation gen 7 was a major theme change not only in um is that true i feel like most people i ask say gen 5 i don't know the freaking culture, the Hawaii that they try to show off in the game. But in terms of what kind of game it was, there was totems instead of gyms. There were freaking kahunas, which were like elite four members introduced early. And then islands, instead of one big region, you explored an island, move on to the next. It was like an adventure. Making a game is not simple. Masada and his friends go travel to Hawaii. They study the culture and then they base their games off it. You, you'll notice they have like tweets from Hawaii like two years before Sun and Moon come out. And people try to study what places they go to. I'm pretty sure they went to France before Kalos came out. And I'm pretty sure they went to the UK for Galar. Now about Gen 7, it was a good story, even with a sad ending and all. But you know, they did all this stuff. They make this game. And when it comes time to promote these games and get people hyped for it game freaks marketing team or nintendo's marketing team whichever one it was sucked major ass <laughs> i wrote a point under this like if you're into that sure come on man listen the marketing team for sun moon did a terrible terrible ass job so bad like they're why is my shit so laggy i don't understand actually good games but they were crapped on they were given to you in the form of crap Game Freak made Gen 7 such a plot twist. Let me take you guys back. The best game I think Pokemon hyped up that I can remember and close enough that you guys can remember is X and Y's hype period. Check out the situation, okay? Gen 5 is over. We looked at Arceus as the god Pokemon, the final one in the Pokedex. With Gen 5, we had Genesect. It also had its cool vibe. It was like another kind of Mewtwo. The Pokedex was complete. We were used to all the Pokemon. The end of 2012 comes. We're getting a new announcement in 2013. They announce X and Y. Everyone's mind is freaking blowing. And they get this feeling in their heart. Okay, not a cliche feeling, but a feeling of, dude, this is going to be freaking crazy. Like, there's more Pokemon. The point of the marketing of the game is to hype you up for the ride. The reason X and Y gave such a cool feel is because it was a mystery. They freaking promoted the games in total darkness. They freaking showed us this pink Pokemon Ninfia. And it's like, dude, this is an evolution. What do you think? Oh, I feel like he's like talked for like three minutes and not really made any point, but let's continue. Like he's not, okay, he's, tr he's finally giving examples, so I'm hyped. It is. Type question mark, question mark, question mark. The internet divides in half. They're like, dude, it's fine. Ooh, it's yeah, this is good marketing for sure. This is pretty sick marketing. Um, I mean, like, this is really hype. I agree with this. Okay, continue. Normal evolution. And the other half is thinking, dude, it's a freaking light type. It's a fairy type. Everyone's minds are blown. They're freaking all over the place. Rumors are also going saying there's going to be light and sound type. So everyone's just so excited. They freaking look at Evolto, looks like a sound type. Look at Xerneas, looks like a light type. Dude, we're so hyped for these games. Hoping for a new type and seeing that evolution with the question mark typing made so much speculation and so much hype for ourselves. We want to enjoy the ride towards the games. Nowadays, you know what they would do instead of that Ninthia crap? They would just show a new evolution. Snodion, a freaking poison type. XY's hype period was so interesting because they were. Wait, what? What do you mean? So from what I remember from the rollout and promotion of Gen 7 was like, I, I don't really remember anything from, but like, didn't they, um, wait, so for the sword and shield announcement, right? Um, what did they show? Did they show anything before the big trailer? Stuff in the circle that we were familiar with in Pokemon. We knew all 649 Pokemon. We knew all the typings. We know the games inside out. And now they're teasing this new evolution. They're leaving it for us to figure out. Then freaking time goes and they reveal it's a fairy type. Everyone is freaking hyped. And then they reveal this freaking weird ass crap. Now it, it showed up earlier in a movie poster. And everyone's like, dude, this is fake. They're like, dude, this is freaking fake. Someone drew this crap. Why is there a weird looking Mewtwo? Is that Mew3? And then, like, I remember my reaction. Just randomly, Pokemon uploads a video saying, what the hell is this Pokemon? This Mewtwo looking Pokemon. And it's a trailer what? showing that crap from the fake poster. And it's real. It's freaking animated. It's wiggling. That is not Mewtwo. Everyone is freaking hyped for it. They're like, dude, that's Mew3. No one's going to think of Mega Evolution at this point. Even if someone leaked Mega Evolution, people wouldn't believe it. Everyone's thinking that, dude, in our familiar circle of Pokemon, look at these things they're teasing. Dude, this is exciting. And then months go by of us speculating and being hyped for it. And they introduce freaking Mega Evolution. Show off Mega Blaziken, Mew2. 
into Mega Evolving Absolute Car, yo. It's so crazy. We don't feel like this is a new game that's introducing all these craps. We feel like this is our Pokemon franchise that we're used to, and all of this is real. It, it officially exists. And because they gave it to us as a mystery and hyped it up, regardless of what mixed reactions Mega Evolution gave us, everyone hated Mega Evolution at some point just because it collided with the universe that we knew. But we freaking love it now. The freaking path of Tex and Y, it was an adventure itself. The freaking leak season for like the two weeks before the game came out, where some dude in where? In like, I think Canada. Come on, man. He got the game early under the table. He'd be leaking stuff on his Instagram. He shows us the serpent in one of the games at Zygarde. Okay, hold on. Stop. Stop. So, I agree that this is a hype promotional rollout. But I think the problem here is not the way that the content was promoted, but the type of the content. Mega Evolutions and a new typing is fundamentally insanely huge news for Pokemon, right? What did X and Y have in terms of new content that even came close to that? What kind of content does Sun and Moon have to tease in this way to get this sort of reactions? I'm sorry, I mean Sun and Moon, yeah, yeah. What type of content does Gen 7, Sun and Moon have that you can tease in this way to get people hyped. I don't think it's about the promotional rollout at all. I think it's about the content itself. Alolan forms. And those were teased and hyped, right? Fucking Z-moves are nothing compared to this, right? And even Alolan forms are like whatever compared to this. Everyone's already speculating about what the Z Legendary could be. This man had to leak it. You know what that means? That means the Game Freak didn't freaking put a trailer revealing it. I remember the feeling days before XY was coming out. I just couldn't fathom it. I'm like, dude, this game's about to come out. It's about to change everything. Like, I can't imagine actually playing it. This itself hyped so many people up to play XY. It was like the ultimate hype season. After the games came out, people were finding new Mega Evolutions. There was mythical Pokemon hidden in it. A freaking Mega Latios and Mega Latias. And we couldn't hack the games. There was no data mining. Some random dude Smealum. He freaking, he's a freaking hacking genius. He managed to hack the, all the new Pokemon in it and even showed us like Arceus and Neo's 3D models because we had to wait till like Pokemon two years later to actually see what they look like. It was so exciting being limited and enjoying every little thing. I know the mythicals didn't end up like how they should have, like how they did in Diamond and Pearl, where they're like actually existent in the game. Like if you go to the carbon cave on a certain day, or you get a freaking item from an event, then a new cave opens up and you can catch Diancy, where a door opens to the power plant, and you can catch Volcanium, and then the same thing for Hoopa. That's not how they did it. But just knowing that these mythicals existed gave us such a cool game. After X Y came out for like the next eight months, there was crazy, crazy speculation still about just those three Pokemon. Not even Mega Latios and Latios. I made videos about it too. What is Diancy? Is it actually a carbon? What is Hoopa and Volcanion? Before Smealum leaked it, people were studying the statues in the Pokemon League room. There was so much speculation, mystery, and an actual adventure on our end leading up to the game's release. You could go on their site and it would be a mystery. It would show Mega Mewtwo Y and be like, what is this Mewtwo looking Pokemon? And you couldn't do anything. You, you just had that page. You're reading it again and again, wondering what the hell they're about to throw at us. The way they freaking marketed X and Y, it was one of the freaking greatest games ever. The only thing that people hate about X and Y is it was a little easy and it had no po- Wait, okay. I don't really get his point. Like... So yeah, the marketing rollout from Sun and Moon was a little bit different, but I feel like most of that was just due to the content that was in X and Y rather than the type of rollout. But because they can't really do that type of rollout with the content in Sun and Moon. And then the other point is like, okay, like data mining doesn't exist anymore. Wasn't this a thing for Zero Aura? Didn't we know that Zero Aura would be a thing without ever being able to get it and we could speculate about it as well, right? Or I guess we knew that Zero Aura was in the game because of data mining. So the problem is that data mining exists, not that, not not the type of promotion. I think the problem is Nintendo knows that data mining exists, so they can't really do this type of promotion anymore, right? Post game. Well, easy because they have to change for the times. I know they could add a hard mode. Who knows if Monster knows what that is. In the post game, they were probably planning Z. I mean, Kanto has no post game, really. So Kalos was exactly like Kanto, except it probably would have had a real post game when Pokemon Z came out like a year or two later. There was so much. What is this X and Y apology? It's not, it's, it's okay that it didn't have a post game because Z would have had post game. What? Okay, dude. No, I will not accept this. I think Gen 6 is way worse than Gen 7. That was a mystery that made it something like, dude, I have to buy that game and experience this game myself. Nowadays, they freaking spoil everything. Also, the X and Y, the only bad thing about X and Y. It, it's not that the only bad thing about X and Y was that it was too easy. That's not a fair criticism. The pacing of that game fucking sucked balls. The overworld chibi style is arguably really ugly. The region is really bad with cramped as hell like routes with really bad route design. 
Don't go around pretending like X and Y was a really good Pokemon game. It was arguably being like the second worst in the series. In Oraz, there wasn't a single Mega Evolution that we found after Oraz because they spoiled every single one inside the game. The three starters, freaking Beedrill, Pidgeot, Slowbro, Steelix, all the way down to freaking Mega Rayquaza. It's Pinot Rayquaza. Why? Mega Galate. They freaking spoiled Mega Galate. In September, two months before the game comes out, Mega Galate. Oh, Wally. There was nothing to experience for Oraz. And we didn't know that going into the game. So we suspected it would be just like X and Y. And lo and behold, people play Oraz. And I mean, Oraz is freaking great. But what they showed us in the hype train leading up to it is everything in the game. It's like you see a commercial for a freaking like Hot Wheels set. Like a track for the car to go around. You're like, dude, that is so cool. You buy it. You do the exact same thing in the freaking commercial. There's nothing new. So you're just experiencing yourself. Can you imagine, okay, if Oraz came out and like half of these Mega Evolutions were hidden? Game Freak started getting the idea. Around. Holy shit. Imagine the only. Imagine if the only enjoyment you got from a game was the new experience of, oh shit, I've never seen this Pokemon before. Wow. That must be a pretty fucking shit game. Who the fuck plays video games like this? It's not a f <laughs> What? And Oraz time that they have to spoil every single crap in the game in order to maximize their sales. The fact that Oraz came out and they spoiled the Delta episode and Mega Rayquaza. The only kind of mystery we got from Oraz is when they just showed us the cover art of the two legendaries and we're like, okay, I'm pretty sure I remember Groudon. He doesn't look like that. Is there something wrong with him? And then they were like, oh, Primal Groudon, Primal Kyogre. Freaking wonderful. That was probably the greatest mystery in Oraz because there was no mystery after that. Could you imagine playing through Oraz and then making it to Steven and he mega evolves his freaking Metagross? They didn't freaking show us Mega Gyarados. That was one of the coolest things ever. When freaking Lysandre's throat was Lysander. Is that his name? When Lysander sent them Gyarados and then freaking Mega. Does this guy never play a Pokemon? game twice is that the only enjoyment he gets out of this games what the fuck was it on you but it's like game figures like dude we're not gonna get enough sales let's spoil everything this this is sure to get all the sales can you imagine playing through you beat steven and you're like dude that's did he just blame them for pursuing a marketing strategy that gets them more sales just because he personally doesn't enjoy the games what the fuck is this point but this is the end of the this, this this point is so bad wait i can't believe how bad this point is I can't believe these professional marketers are pursuing a marketing strategy they, they think gets more sales because I, who I assume am not a marketing professional, know better what's better for your sales because I enjoy my Pokemon games in very particular. What the fuck is this point? This is so bad. The game. I mean, these are Ruby and Sapphire remakes, but I wonder if there's more. So you explore, and then it says Delta episode begins. Can you imagine how crazy, how excited people would be like, dude, what the hell Delta episode? That means Delta really is what Emerald represents. Delta Emerald. Yeah, but the problem is that the Delta episode was shit, so that would have been the only good thing about the Delta episode. Maybe if they'd made the Delta episode actually good, this wouldn't have mattered. They tell you the story about Rayquaza and how it's the original Mega Evolution, the one that doesn't need a Mega Stone because it's the actual natural Mega Evolution. And then you climb up the tower, you freaking meet Xenia, she has her Mega Salamence, and then Deoxys comes down. They spoiled everything in the Delta episode. Dude, if we experienced the Delta episode ourselves, it would be one of the greatest things ever. But it's like Game Freak's like, dude, we need this. Also, you realize you can, like, just not watch any of the promotional material, right? Like, you can choose to not watch it. That's a thing you can do. Right? Like... If this is how you personally like enjoying your games. The sales. Uh, 10,000 people. We need 10,000 more people to order. Let's spoil the Delta episode. It's like how many people weren't going to buy Auras until you freaking showed them Mega Rayquaza and fighting Deoxys. And the reason anyone goes out and buys these games is because we have the same mindset as we did after Black and White and after X and Y, which is that there's more than what's in these trailers. I'm pretty sure. But you freaking buy Auras and there's only what they showed in the trailers. So what exists in Auras other than the freaking Delta episode? Oh portals to catch all the legendaries wow that's the hoopah homage i wanted listen oras was an incredible game but it's like where's the experience in playing the games yourself you ruin the game by trying to get more sales which i don't freaking knock you down for because you're a freaking business and you need to get sales it takes a lot of money and effort to make these games you want to profit but it's like now you're now you're messing with the trust why the fuck does this guy play pokemon games what the fuck <laughs> Mystery during the hype period would be cool. I mean, it's cool for like the online discussions. Yeah, that's pretty fun to like get get. I agree with this. Like, I agree that that Sylveon reveal, for example, was really cool. 
But I don't really care if they spoil the Delta episode. Who cares? <laughs> if it was really good, then, like, it doesn't matter, right? Also, how much of the um, Rainbow Rocket episode even was spoiled for Aura, for, for Yusum? of fans but still pokemon is pokemon I, I freaking loved oraz it doesn't matter if they spoiled everything it was a great game now we move on from the blank year to 2016 sun and moon let me tell you something sun and moon is the freaking biggest plot twist ever we're freaking used to regions we're used to just simple games gyms elite four champion done we didn't expect sun and moon after x and y x and y fit the mold perfectly and we're like okay there are 721 pokemon now we're used to it this is our new familiar circle of pokemon sun and moon gets leaked the day before it's announced we're freaking going crazy like dude sun and moon there's gonna be more in pokemon what the hell are they gonna offer we still love pokemon it doesn't matter if they spelled everything we, we want to see what's next pokemon sun and moon's announced in this big freaking crazy trailer where they go through all the generations black and white x and y and yeah. then they show us as minimal gameplay as possible. Look at this. All these freaking prototype screenshots of freaking bird they're working on. Sun and moon. Just the logos. Freaking wonderful. I love this That's trailer so cool. much. You know why? Because they gave us barely anything to work with. Just these two titles was enough to hype us up. Was enough to get us speculating about anything possibly that could be found in this trailer. We freaking took every single image here. We zoomed it in. We freaking studied it. We knew that was red right there. We were wondering why he's there. We studied this bird Pokemon. He looked a lot like Fletchling. And we really wondered what the graphics were going to be like. It just looks like it'll be X and Y graphics. Notice how they show everyone running. And then they don't show Sun and Moon's running. Such a wonderful trailer. Because the graphics didn't even improve that much. <laughs> I I still don't really get what his point is, but we'll and continue. The best part is that they didn't show us the legendary Sogle and Dunala. So you're wondering, what do they look like? What is this game about? So much to think about. I know they didn't enforce any mystery on us like X and Y did, but at least they started off solidly and we could speculate. This was the main thing I was hoping for going into the Sword and Shield announcement. I really, really didn't want them to just reveal so much. It gives us nothing to work with. Now we're just waiting for the games to come out. But then comes a crap ride. So here, I got a playlist of Pokemon's official trailers. The first trailer, Sun and Moon was announced in February. End of February, March, April. It took till May for them to actually reveal to us some gameplay. That's the same period we're going through right now where there's no gameplay being revealed. Well, yeah. Let us let it settle in a bit. Don't give us too much. Good so far, Game Freak. L look what they reveal in this trailer. After that beautiful start of not giving us too much, what are they gonna do? They give us freaking the graphics. They give us the starters. Yeah. And they just freaking throw the legendaries at us. Like, okay, look, this isn't a bad move, okay? But where's the mystery? Like, you guys saw how much engaged all your fans were when X Y was coming out. Y'all just threw Wait, the out there. Didn't Chris, he just... say earlier that when they revealed Xerneas and Evital, that was good because it got us speculating about what their types were? Couldn't that be, couldn't that same argument be made for this? Like, they showed us the legendaries, now everyone's speculating, hey, what's this thing about? What's this? Like, they showed Mewtwo, Mega Mewtwo's model, and they were like, C couldn't the same argument, because all they show is like the, is, is, their, is their models and them attacking, right? So couldn't I make the same argument of like, okay, now everyone's speculating about what this is, right? Just make the trailer about the starters because the question mark question mark type from sylveon yeah but i mean even but there was nothing like that to reveal from gen 7 right so what were they supposed to do i don't understand And then tease the legendaries at the end and show silhouettes of them and make and write the caption like they did with Mewtwo and Sylveon. What are these Pokemon? What role could they play? Wait, so what's your line? How much of the legendaries are they supposed to reveal? Because they never reveal full information about it. We didn't know the types, right? We didn't know what they had to do with the story, what they represented, right? What the journey was to get them um, and all that. But revealing the silhouettes would be okay? I, I, I don't get it. I'm sorry what they look like, raise mystery, and then reveal them in the trailer after. Because look at the way this trailer just went. It's just revealing stuff. It's just a uh, spoiler here, spoiler here, uh, here the legendary spoiler. It's it's just a spoiler ride. This is their freaking train. Wait, isn't revealing that the fairy type exists also a spoiler? Wait, guys. <laughs> what does this guy think a spoiler is? Isn't revealing Mega Mewtwo Y's model a spoiler? <laughs> I don't understand this point at all. <laughs> What the fuck is he talking about? <laughs> Wait, so is revealing stuff good or bad? I don't understand. Train of spoilers. Next trailer. Powerful legendary Pokemon hears everything about Sogaleo. Wow, Psychic Steel. 
Oh, Bill, you full metal body. Okay, thanks for that. But do you realize how excited people would have been if they just showed you the line silhouette and was like, what is this Pokemon? His importance ties in with the sun. And then people are speculating it's typing, what it looks like, what its name could be. And then you reveal Soul Glare. Now people are sad. Wouldn't that be a spoiler if they revealed it in that way? Wouldn't that be bad? Satisfied. Their mystery was answered, and now they're even more intrigued. They want to learn more about the games. You just threw up. Yeah, it's only if he wants it to be spoiled specifically, or if it's part of the generation that he dislikes the marketing of. <laughs> this freaking, you just spoiled it. The mystery aspect and the suspense is what makes the actual reveal itself satisfying and interesting. There's no mystery and suspense. There's no reveal. Literally, like 20 days after the last trailer, they tell us everything, even its ability, because we don't want to give you even a sliver to speculate what its ability could be. It's like, who cares what its ability is? Why don't you just save the ability for after the release? How many more sales are you getting from showing us the ability? Game Freak works so hard in these games, and their marketing team are just crap lords. Like, they suck at promoting the game. Oh, Sunsteel Strike, wow. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Why are you showing a Sunsteel Strike? Is someone not gonna buy the game and then they see this and they're like, dude, that's a pretty cool move. Maybe I'll buy Sun and Moon. Why can't you leave these things for us to find out in the game? Lunala, Psychic Ghost, Shadow Shield, yeah. We, we totally care. We know what that does. What I'm saying is everything in this trailer is a spoiler. Nothing Wait, you. what? <laughs> what the fuck? Oh, we Wait, totally care. Just... We know what that does. Isn't the argument Absolutely. literally... Suck at promoting the game. Oh, so, so when they reveal something that we don't know, he's like, oh, we don't know what that is. So why are you revealing it? But, 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 but then... I... What? <laughs> but then he argues that he should reveal like the silhouette. She, they should reveal the silhouette because it gets people speculating. Doesn't the name of the ability get people speculating? This is the worst point I've ever heard in my life. Sunsteel strike. Wow. Why are you showing the sunsteel strike? It's because it's because they want to show off the new fucking move animations. What are you talking about? This is like super good promotion. This is like the core gameplay. Of course they would fucking show this off. Because they want to show that there's like signature moves and shit. This is a really big part of Sun and Moon. It's like Z moves and shit. What the fuck? Someone not gonna buy the game and then they see this and they're like, dude, that's a pretty cool move. Maybe I'll buy Sun and Moon. Why can't you leave these things for us to find her in the game? Yes, exactly. You just, you, you just said, why? <laughs> wow. Why are you showing a Sunsteel strike? Is someone not gonna buy the game and then they see this and they're like, dude, that's a pretty cool move. Maybe I'll buy Sun and Moon. Why yes! leave these things for us to find her in the game. Lunala, Psychic Ghost, Shadow Shield, yeah. We, we totally care. We know what that does. What I'm saying is everything in the trailer is a spoiler. Nothing here hypes you up. Everything here is just- Of course it hypes you up. It shows the fucking new animations. What do you mean? To be like, hey, here's glimpses of our game. I really hope this makes sense. Welcome to the alert. This is the piece of crap lore. Dude, man. This is the second trailer. They're just dumping information. This is the biggest thing that Sun and Moon has to offer. Island. We were hyped over this. So you-, you yeah, exactly. And the biggest thing X and Y had to offer was a new type. So they show, they, <laughs> oh my god, I can't believe, this is actually, I can't watch this. <laughs> what the fuck? They only show the map in this trailer, right? And then people like, people like zoomed in and try to analyze the islands and shit, right? Wasn't that awesome? Isn't this a good thing? They're teasing a little bit of it, and then people are supposed to like zoom in and figure out what this is about, right? So at one point, do you, do you realize? Do you remember? We were like, dude, the, the trailer they showed us in May, the first trailer, it feels like a little bit of a small region. What if it's based off Hawaii? I mean, this is a far-fetched thing, but what if there's multiple islands? Why don't you raise mystery about this? This is a freaking hype train up to it. Not like seven months of promotion so that Sun and Moon stays in the press and in the freaking commercials so that you know it exists by the time the games come out. Come on, man. They Wait, what? I'm sorry, what was it? What was that point? I'm sorry, I need to... This is the second trailer. They're just dumping information. This is the biggest thing that Sun and Moon has to offer. Island. We were hyped over this at one point. Do you, do you realize? Do you remember? We were like, dude, the, the trailer they showed us in May, the first trailer, it feels like a little bit of a small region. What if it's based off Hawaii? I mean, this is a far-fetched thing, but what if there's multiple islands? Why don't you raise mystery about this? This is a... Yeah, isn't it like, okay, this evolution has a new type. Bam, it's fairy. And now you get to speculate more. Isn't that the exact same thing? His comparison is so bad. Freaking hype train up to it. Not like seven months of promotion so that Sun and Moon stays in the press and in the freaking commercials. So you yeah, exactly. Isn't that the point? Wait. You know it exists by the time the games come out. Come on, man. They Isn't that exactly the point of the marketing? To make more reveal trailers so it stays in the press and in everyone's heads? Isn't that good marketing? What? Do you not want Pokemon to sell? What the fuck?
I still don't know what his point is. He wants to spec. He's upset because he wants to speculate an arbitrary amount. Yeah. No. He has the problem is he has his conclusions reached when he, he was like, okay, I'm going to start with the conclusion, then I'm going to try to work my arguments out of it. He's 100 percent just arguing in bad faith. Freaking revealed all four regions, dude. Imagine making this a teaser, the same way you did Mewtwo and and, and Sylveon, man. Not only do you freaking just poop out four island, wow. Like you don't save anything. I know they show you the regions before a game comes out, but in this case, where there's islands, they could bring speculation to people to wonder what if there's multiple islands. This is this this pisses me off so much, man. They could have made this so hype because they pooped it out. Now now you're just like, okay, there's four islands. I don't want to stay on this. There's so much I could. Okay. Wait. Okay, I, I have to pause every five seconds because every single one of his points is bad. Hold on. Games come out. Come on, man. They freaking revealed all four regions, dude. Imagine making this a teaser. The same way you did Mewtwo and, and, and Sylveon, man. Not if you can make speculation music, you can make ten. Every, everyone's making speculation videos anyway. <laughs> Poop out. Four <laughs> That's the out. point. Like, you don't save anything. I know they show you the regions before a game comes out, but in this case where there's islands, they could bring speculation to people to wonder what if there's multiple islands. This, is, this, this pisses me off so much, man. They could have made this so hype. Because they pooped it out. Now, now So he remember, remember what he just said. If they revealed less, then people would speculate if there's more islands. Right? That's what he just said. And now watch what the, like, the next frame of the video is going to be. It was so casually revealed that people thought they were hiding three more islands. So they were, they were speculating that there were more islands anyway? So your point is completely mute. You just completely contradicted yourself. Isn't this the same as them revealing the fairy type and people uh, and and people speculating that there's a sound type as well? I don't want to stay on this. There's so much I could. S okay, cool. Yeah, show the professor. Show Lily. Sure. Show all these dudes. There's a Rotom in your Pokedex. Now look, this Rotom didn't end up being much. Like, what was the point of working on this this Rotom if you didn't even do much? Because it was shit content. They thought it was good content. It was just like. <laughs> I think it, I think the Rotom Dex is legitimate. The people that work at Game Freak being super out of touch with reality. I think this is like a content problem. I think I'll agree with his point here, but more from the perspective that the Rotom Dex was just shit content. And they thought it wasn't. With it, look, it's pooped out on this trailer too. All of it's revealed in one trailer. What's the point? It's a spoiler fest to keep people's just attention high. They've given up. Exactly. That's fucking marketing. <laughs> on the excitement that they caused in X and Y, they're just like, dude, it takes too much work. Uh, we're just, we're just gonna poop out four blocks of spoilers, four islands. There's a freaking Rotom in your Pokedex. You freaking designed a Rotom. You have what is a Sugimori art of it. You made dialogue throughout the game for the Rotom. Why didn't you just make the Rotom a Pokemon? If you get a Rotom and it's a Pokemon, like a new Rotom form. Yeah, I agree. Of not introducing it. I'm saying they could have made this Rotom itself a tease. You could show the silhouette of this thing, write the caption, a familiar. Okay, thing. but now. But now you're not criticizing the marketing, you're criticizing the content, which I agree with. Electric Pokemon is in a new appliance. And people be like, bro, it's a new Rotom form. No one cares. No one actually cares of new Rotom form. But we just like Pokemon. We like the new reveals and stuff. So a month later, when you reveal Rotom... Wait, but they didn't reveal whether it was a new Pokemon or not, right? So people speculated about that anyway, no? Pokedex form. And not only does he do everything he does in the game, but he's actually an obtainable Pokemon. It's exciting. This, no one cares anymore. No one actually cares once you revealed it like this. There has to be a tease, anticipation, people speculating, and then the reveal. Isn't that exactly what happened, though? <laughs> What's the difference between a tease and a reveal? This is the core problem with this video. Is that his distinction between what's a tease and what's a reveal is completely fucking arbitrary. Isn't the fact that they revealed the name of the ability of Lunala, but not what it does, is that a tease or is that a reveal? It's completely arbitrary. This is the entire, like, core problem of, of, of the idea of this video. Then something is cool. This, there's none of those four. It goes from freaking one to four, which is a spoiler. I remember being hyped about this because I want to feel some sort of hype when they reveal all these things. This is only two trailers, guys. Do you understand how many teases and exciting things they could have had for people to speculate just with this? This is better than the freaking Ninja crap. Two Zygarde forms are ready for battle. This is the next trailer a, a new month later. They just, the title, two Zygarde forms are ready for battle. Listen, man, it's the smaller things that people care about. Seeing these guys in actual, a Pokemon game, like in Pokemon battle graphics, it's like seeing Arceus for the first time when Spielum leaked it, or me when they're small, but they're 3D and animated. It's exciting. They just freaking poop out Zygarde 10% form, has thousand arrows, and then also- Wait, what? What the fuck was his point? Wait, 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 what was his point? Is there a hotkey to go back like five seconds on YouTube? A Pokemon game, like in Pokemon Battle Graphics. It's like His definition of a tease and a reveal is X and Y is tease, the exact same thing as Sumo is a reveal. Yeah. 
seeing Arceus for the first time when Spielan leaked it, or me when they're small, but they're 3D and animated, it's exciting. They're just freaking- So it's exciting, but this is pooped out. Why? I don't understand. Poop out Zyger 10% form, has 1,000 arrows, and then also introducing Zyger 100. Like, I don't even want to complain about this. You guys can complain for me about this. This is just them taking a stroll and spoiling whatever they can to you. Like, who's going to see this? What do you mean, whatever they can? <laughs> what are you talking about? This is so, com his distinctions are so arbitrary. And be like, dude, this is our news for the month. How cool. Not only is it freaking irrelevant to the games, but it's just a spoiler on Zygarde. Like, this crap is what they took out of Pokemon Z. I'm telling you, I'll freaking rant about Pokemon Z one day. They just freaking took their remaining craps and put it here. They I do agree with oh, that. Oh, they even revealed a freaking move. You know how exciting it would be if you freaking found this dude as a standing legendary? In some way. Like, maybe in that empty cave in, in Sun and Moon that's shaped like a perfect Zygarde. And wow, they put a freaking Zygarde cell in there. What if, if you enter the cave, there's nothing there? But if you Didn't they not even reveal that the Zygarde cells were in the game at this point? Isn't that like. Isn't that, wait, so, okay, if I was to run a tar tube right now, and I was talking about X and Y instead of, and, and I had my conclusion backwards, and I was like, Sun and Moon are the better marketing. At this point, here's what I would say. Dude, can't they freaking, can't they freaking, the, uh, Sun and Moon was so awesome because they freaking revealed the Zygarde, and they freaking revealed it, but we didn't even know how this tied into the real game. We were all speculating, we were all wondering, hmm, how does Zygarde tie, tie into Sun and Moon after being in X and Y? Oh man, I wonder if the cells are, are in the games and people actually get speculating, right? He, you can make these exact same points switch with the exact same arguments that he's making. If you transfer over Zygarde from X and Y and you enter the cave, there's another Zygarde there. And when you talk to it, it freaking takes your Zygarde and turns in the perfect form and you can capture it. Wow, how hard is it to program that? You freaking programmed all this. Look at this transformation. But no, a spoiler. And reveal that no one cares for because you didn't tease it, hype it up, or make anyone want to care and anticipate at least the spoiler. You just threw it out there. Like, this trailer's irrelevant. People actually don't like Zygarde because of how it was a perfect turd that in, in its reveal. All right, meet new Pokemon. Pokemon reveals are cool. What? People don't like teased. Zygarde because of its reveal? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> He's the program, saying the program should do more work for the marketing. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't, yeah, like, he realizes that the... People that the people doing the marketing are often like completely distinct from the people doing the programming, right? Like this is usually like outsourced, or not outsourced, but it's a completely different department. He's every single Pokemon. It's for things people would want to speculate and care about. These are cool, man. This trailer was fine. They they just revealed a couple things. Notice, all right? It has likes. It has views. Hey, look, all the trainers are wearing different clothing. We're speculating these freaking four craps because you're not giving us anything to speculate about. Look, even the trailer probably hints at a brand new evolution. See how people are- So people are speculating. Wait, I'm 100% sure. I can go to into any X and Y reveal, uh, uh, X and Y trailer or reveal or whatever YouTube video right now and find tens of thousands or like hundreds of comments who are speculating about things that didn't end up existing. What the fuck is his point? Looking for hints? You're looking for some sort of mystery to speculate- Yeah. People were doing that for the X and Y videos just as much. <laughs> Don't you want? I thought you wanted people to speculate. What the fuck do you want? Oh, here's the Eevee with the freaking Magearna. You're, you're thinking there's gonna be like a steel type Magearna. People are going out of their way to make the mystery themselves because Gimpy still hasn't teased a single thing and it's been like freaking five months. Even this, if they went far with this and just put a, the same kind of teasers as Ninfia and just showed Eevee with the, a silhouette of a new evolution, does not already just sound exciting compared to anything you can recall from Sun and Moon's hype season? Let's go to the next one. Oh my god, dude. Okay. New Pokemon have appeared. The Guardian of Melly Melly Island! New Pokemon have appeared. Okay, let's see. They revealed Grubbin last time. Stop that stop with Coco. I'm getting a phone call. Listen, man, I, I you guys can see But they revealed Mega Mewtwo X or Mega Mewtwo Y. <laughs> right? What I'm talking about, right? You guys are smart. When I made the last run, you guys actually understood the point I was trying to make better than me about how about the excitement and thrill of a game. You guys see what I'm saying here, right? What the hell is this guy doing here, what? man? What happened to the teaser? You've revealed the island. What about a teaser? The silhouette of this guy? Because he's clearly a culture, it's a freaking totem pole. He's upset that he didn't just divide every spoiler in half. Yeah. Three people fighting the Snorlax is one of them. It's like, why don't you tease this guy and be like, this Pokemon is rumored to be the guardian of Mele Mele. What is his importance? Maybe tease that there's a trainer that's befriended him. For the first time, it's a legendary befriended by a trainer. No, no one knows Tapu Koko. No one cares about Tapu Koko because they don't know it. No one's anticipating some sort of top. Tapu Koko, let's reveal the typing. Let's show everything about him. He's there. He's with Hala. This is like misleading clickbait right here. They showed the freaking one time he's in a cutscene. And open. <laughs> what? <laughs> misleading clickbait? <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> 
opening up like that. They reveal his ability. There's nothing left in the game. Why? You don't have to reveal the ability. You're not, you've, I'm telling you right now. I'm no genius. You've gotten zero extra sales by revealing Tapu Koko as electric. Okay. I like how he makes no points about sales in this, by the way, or like impact or like whatever. He could have like data about like search impressions at the time or something. Here's, here's how he could make a good argument. Yeah, Electric Terrain is new to the fucking game. <laughs> how is that not a good reveal? How's, anyway. Here, here's how you could make a good point right now, Tyranitar Tube. Here's how you could make a good point right now. Why don't you go to like Google, right? And go to Google Trends and look at how many search results Sun and Moon were bringing up at the time versus X and Y. Like how much traffic each of these got when the certain trailers were revealed, right? Maybe give us some fucking data and not just a gut feeling about how this marketing worked. Maybe we could actually take your fucking point seriously. Big search. Oh, you're right. I'm sorry. Terrains were totally Gen 6. My bad, my bad. You know, you might have been better off not showing this guy because no one wanted to see him. I think you lost a couple sales here. <laughs> then we got like a mini trailer on the site where they revealed Salandit. Hey, a cool new ability. Poisons any type of Pokemon. Pretty cool. That's interesting. It's a tease of like a new variety you'll find in this game. There's new abilities. That's cool. And then we have more newly discovered Pokemon have arrived for Pokemon Sun and Moon. I don't even know if this is going to be a or not because this is kind of different than the format I'm used to. And the next trailer just introduces a bunch of Pokemon and their abilities. All right, cool. Mimic you. Listen, Mimikyu ended up being irrelevant, but like, it ended up being like an anti-Pikachu. Why don't you just, why don't you just tease it? Why don't you just put a picture? You don't have to silhouette it this time. Just show that on the what? site and be like, what is this Pokemon that looks like a Pikachu? And then reveal what it is. Like, why would you not go the extra step to do that? Why would you just show us Mimikyu? I was like, this is actually the kind of Pokemon that you would tease. I remember in X and Y days, that because of the Sylveon and Mega Mewtwo mystery they had on their site, people made all kinds of ones. There was like an Electro that was a square. Who cares about Electro? No one actually cares about Electro. But because there's a mystery like that, that really made me interested. I wanted to be real so bad in X and Y days just because the mystery is so fun. Listen, if people were excited over a freaking square cubicle electrode, yeah, yeah, hyper training and stuff, that's cool. So it is now July 2016. What's it, month seven? Sun and Moon is actually looking interesting. I mean, there's no freaking mystery, but they've spoiled some pretty interesting stuff. The Island Guardian. We know there's four islands. Wow, maybe it'll be interesting to, you know, play the game and see those other three guardians. I think it's pretty cool how they've barely shown us much about the game. I can't wait to actually play it and see what these games are about. What's Sogol and Lunala are about? Enter the next trailer. Nobody says nothing. Pokemon, here's Alolan Exeggutor. What? I'm about to pick up Exeggutor and slap someone with it. Bro, I'm sitting here taking each of the small things. Talk about silhouetting Sogol and Lunala, the islands. You might be like, Titar, there's nothing of me Mega Mewtwo's caliber in these games. I, I honestly, yeah, I don't know. This is just going to be the same shit over and over again. I can't really make any additional points if he doesn't make additional points. No one asked for this. This is the greatest thing to happen in Pokemon ever. Aside from Mega Evolution, there is a new form of an existing Pokemon generations ago that thrives and evolves a different way. This has never been done before. This is an actual evolution. Do you understand the kind of hype? His point is going to be completely shit. We would be, remember Sun Moon is like the greatest hype season ever. Exeggutor is like the craziest example of him. Alolan Exeggutor yes, is a I Pokemon agree. designed a long time ago. It wasn't designed for Sun and Moon. That was Exeggutor's original design. Probably the prototype to the coconut tree we got. All they had to do, okay, was tease us. Dude, I'm getting so pissed thinking about how incredible. Imagine they silhouetted this dude right here, okay? Put him on the side and be like, what is this mystery Pokemon? Haven't we seen this Pokemon somewhere before? Leave it there. Put that as the trailer and have people speculate. The intro would go crazy. Like, wait, wait, wait but... Revealing that this is the Alola form of this Pokemon. I actually distinctly remember this from the Gen 7 hype, from the Gen 7 hype, was that people started speculating what the other Alola forms were. So you're actually enabling speculation that isn't just random like the Eevee shit that he talked about earlier, right? By revealing this is the Alola form. So people are going to be like, hey, there's probably more Alola forms. And people start actually speculating about the game and talking about it, right? Isn't this good? <laughs> Why is he so obsessed with silhouettes? Did X and Y even have silhouettes? We've seen it before. People would quickly realize there's 4chan and Reddit out there. They'll be like, dude, that is, that is Exeggutor. People might even dig a bit earlier and find that image on the, the old booster box of a taller Exeggutor. They would dig into Exeggutor's Pokedex entries. You know what you see? It says Exeggutor does not belong in this region. It says this in Kanto. It came from a place with stronger sunlight. I think it even says it grows differently there. Let me look it up. Exeggutor originally came from the tropics. Its head steadily grows larger from exposure to strong sunlight. It is said that when the heads fall off, they form an execute. Do you realize people would solve the mystery? They would be like, bro, this is mind blowing. Alola is the tropics that it came from. All the way since the first generation, this is the region they're talking about. This is Exeggutor. When it thrives in the tropics, this is its true form. It even says its head steadily grows larger. Yeah, yeah. Everyone was like making fan, like fan made Alolan forms and stuff. Yeah. Much in the same way that when they reveal the new starters, 
everyone starts making fan made um everyone starts making fan made uh evolutions of them, right? Exposure to sunlight. Now we're all excited and anticipating. This is our greatest theory. Now we're waiting for them to reveal it, hoping that our theory is right. And then they reveal this. When a situation like that comes, you want to be right. And you're even more excited if you actually got the mystery correct. It's like if you guys read a manga or anime, when you have a theory of what's going to happen in the, in the story, and you hope that that's going to happen, and that ends up happening, it makes you so excited. It would have been the greatest reveal ever. Then reveal this freaking long head in the next trailer. People will go crazy. Grass dragon. People would be like, bro, this is so sick. Xavier has a different form in these games. That'd be it. No more. Now when the hype calms down the next day, people will start to poke their heads up again. While we're on the topic... Wait, what actually, no, I think he's right. Actually, I think I would go even further than that. Instead of showing silhouettes, they should split the trailers into three. They should only show half the silhouette in the first trailer, then two-thirds of the silhouette in the second trailer, and then the full silhouette in the next... Because can you imagine how much people would speculate if you only show half the silhouette? If you only show half the silhouette, can you imagine how people would go crazy and speculate about it? One that could have an Alolan form. And then as the days go by, that's your new theory. Now people are excited like, dude, I know we're, we're freaking pulling out straws. Chances are there's not more Alolan forms. I mean, it was hinted in this Pokedex entry. That's the only reason he got it. But wouldn't it be so cool if there's like another Pokemon that they revisited and it grew up differently in Alola? Now this is the theory that they want being correct. They want this being correct so bad. You know what happened instead? Nobody says anything. 12 seconds in. Alolan Executor. Two seconds after Alolan Executor. Vulpix Ninetales. Alolan Vulpix and Alolan Ninetales. What the hell, Game Freak? You these are spoilers. You guys see what I'm talking about? Can you imagine if it happened the way I just described? You can just imagine like the hype season. You want to go back to the season. The time period. Everyone was speculating about that cool I remember a fucking Gen 7 hype season. What do you... How many... How many... So how many Alolan forms is it okay to reveal in one trailer? Do, do they need a, a new trailer for every single Alolan form? I don't get it. And hoping that it wasn't the only thing that would have this so-called Alolan form. Two seconds later, before anyone can even say anything or even show any surprise or care, they throw more. There was no teasing. You'd be able to tug on exactly what they're hoping for, which is that there's more Alolan forms. That is the new Mega Evolution. That would be the new thing that everyone is hyped for. That if you put in your thumbnail, you'll get mad views. You click baiters. In the sense that that is the, the, the most intriguing thing. Because man, you realize what they've done with this, right? Now they've just blown everyone's minds without them asking. Now no one cares about the Grubbin Evolution. No one cares about Bounce Sweet and freaking Beware and crap. Now what everyone wants is more spoilers on more Alolan forms. And now that you've introduced yes. it like this, it's like people are ruining for Mega Evolution because of the way it was introduced in this exciting, mysterious way. Think about the magnitude that is Alolan forms. New forms. Of Pokemon. This is a fan idea. This is like Delta Pokemon. They made it real, but they pooped it out in the most disgusting way ever. That it's not even hyped up. That you can't even think back to Sun Moon and be like, dude, that game that introduced a lower form that was so crazy. No, it turned. What? It, w it was. What is he talking about? It was so hyped up. What does he mean? Isn't it just a spoiler? That's it. Once you've spoiled it, it's crap. This breaks something that Pokemon has never done before. A snow Vulpix. Do you know how crazy people would go if they logged onto the site the next day and there's this silhouette here? I mean, with the caption that this is a familiar Pokemon as well. And people are like, no, no, freaking get out of here, Pokemon. That is a Vulpix. Are you about to tell me this? Is this is like worse. Like, if you actually reveal the snow Vulpix, I feel like it gets way more reaction and engagement. I don't know. Different Vulpix, and the people start drawing their content art for different Vulpixes. You get people drawing green. Oh, shit, you're right. He's upset he didn't get enough clickbaitable content for his Gen 7 speculation. <laughs> Vulpix and crap. Someone does a really cool founder of a white Vulpix, and then they reveal this dude in a trailer. It gets people so hyped. It would get people so hyped, but no. And then not only did they reveal Vulpix, they revealed its evolution. Yeah. Bro, where's the room for speculating, dude? Like, if you just showed Vulpix, people would be like, bro, I really need to see that nine The room for speculating is all the other Alolan forms that they didn't reveal, right? I don't, I don't know. Bad. And if you don't show the nine tails in the trailers like you probably should have, then people would be leaking Alolan nine tails on day one of Star Wars release because it's all so exciting. Like, people would evolve it themselves. Do you guys remember? There was no cap. Why is he so obsessed with people leaking the evolutions on day one? What's so. I, I don't get what's so exciting about that. Hello, their evolutions in trailers. People had to go find and leak it, screenshots, people avoiding them. Everyone thought Greninja was fake. Wait, but didn't they not reveal the evolutions of the starters? Isn't that so? That's a good thing, right? For for like Gen Seven, they did that. I remember seeing Greninja, I'm like, bro, this has to be fake. And then you see another screenshot where it shows Greninja from another angle. You're like, bro, this is all getting crazy. That mystery, that limit of information, that's where it's at, man. If I tell you the whole story of an anime, you to watch it. Also, I'm, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry, I keep pausing it, but don't we still get shit like that? Wasn't the fucking just a couple months ago there was a fake um. A fake gameplay, like a super uh, accurate fake Gen 8 Pokemon revealed, right? That everyone thought was real, where people put like a lot of like effort into it and shit, right? This still happens with like leaks that could be real, could be fake, right? You told me what happens. It's like, look what you're doing. You're telling me everything in Sun and Moon and you want me to play it. They were incredible games. Yeah, tell me the really cool. Ice Fairy, yeah. Tell us everything. Show them in battle. Bro, this makes me so mad because, like, they saw, they witnessed how crazy they shook the internet with X and Y. And it wasn't just their way of hyping the Mega Evolution. They did it with Sylveon as well. They had this mystery aspect. Oh, look at that. Two seconds later, now Sancho has an evolving form. I steal. So you don't even need to show Sancho in this trailer. Let, let me find this in the game. If I found this in the game, I would add him to my party. I'd be like, bro, this is the coolest thing ever. I see it in the trailer, I'm like, whatever. This is typical. Everyone probably has it. There's no excitement, man. How do you play Sun and Moon and feel like you're making your own team? Think you're, you've got this unique team put together. This is the thing right here. And they have the Does he, like, ever play Pokemon games a second time? 
I don't understand. Is this really the only enjoyment you get out of the games? It's kind of sad. It's a way to introduce that executor. It's the ultimate way to rile them up. So not only have you completely just spoiled in the most poopish way that there are lowland forms, but you revealed freaking five of them in 45 seconds. In the beginning, I was people would be accepting if Exeggutor was the only one, but hoping that there's more. Oh yeah, followed by Oracorio. Because we care about Oracorio after you start the trailer 13 seconds in with the lowland Exeggutor. I'm not even going to show Oracorio beforehand. This is like freaking being a comedian and going after Kevin Hart. Like, yeah, everyone's still going to be there. They're going to find you funny. You know what happened when the trailer came out? Which, let me tell you guys, when it's August 1st and you see this trailer, you're not thinking that it's a spoiler. You're thinking Gameplay knows what they're doing. You're thinking they have so many lowland forms that they're just pooping out this many. Look where your expectations went. That's literally what people are feeling. You know what people picked upon in this trailer? The freaking Oracorio. Because you spoil your lowland forms. So let me look at these four Oracorios and be like, hey, electric flying. Maybe this, maybe these reflect the tapus. I wonder if the other three tapus would be like this. Well, can't wait to buy the game. What's the point of the stream? I'm currently watching this YouTube video while I'm grinding my team for the Crystal Kaizo Nuzlocke! Exclamation point FAQ. Should give you a pretty good overview of what we're doing gameplay wise. Well, totem pole tapus for myself, call in the service as a ride Pokemon. If you're a kid watching it, the idea of, of like riding a Pokemon is kind of cool. The island challenge, the rite of passage. And then the way they introduced island trials, like, it was thrown in our face and forced to accept it. Like, they didn't even hype up island challenge, like, this region. What? Doesn't have gyms. They have something better. They have a more traditional form of finding worthy trainers, introducing island challenge. What the hell is your rite of passage? No one even knows what that means. I'm an idiot, I'm 21 years old. I don't even know what that means. I don't even care what that means. This is. Meet the trial captain. Do you not know what a rite of passage is? <laughs> Isn't that what gyms are? Things. There's nothing wrong with island trials. There's nothing wrong with trial captains instead of gym leaders and the fact that you don't fight them. But they were, it was it was so blandly hyped up that no one cares. I mean, I need you to find four ingredients for me. People talk about how they hate island trials and they should have had gyms instead. But look at how they introduced it. Of course, people are gonna feel like this. No one even made you want to like island trials. They're good ideas, and especially in Ultra Sun Moon, where the bosses were actually tough. Like they went freaking hard mode on you when you fought the totems in Ultra Sun Moon. But they, they made it unlikable. It's like whoever worked on this game and worked so hard on the graphics and all the different aspects of the game. Whichever team worked on it, it's like someone who wasn't even a part of the process. Someone hired on Fiverr, who's the lead of the marketing team, to promote and hype this game up. Marvel Pokemon away at the end of the game. Yeah, this like is generally how marketing works. The programmers generally don't also have to like work on marketing the game you guys can fill in the blank man you could have introduced totems and trials in such a cooler way like i remember when the trailer came out, i don't even know what's going on like we're just like, oh whoa there's a wait so he didn't you didn't know what so you're saying you didn't know what was going on because there was not enough information revealable right because it's so is it a tease or a, a reveal what is it so the there's people who think you can go do, do some gems, and you take a path and you find one of these dudes. Wouldn't that be interesting? No, you get this instead of gems. Clear each island challenge to battle the Kahuna. Yeah, Hala's the Kahuna with the 13, level 13 Mikey. On your way to attack. Z moves revealed. Oh my freaking god, look, look, look. Look how they revealed Z moves. Who gets excited off this? Unleash a Z move once per battle. No miss. How else would you possibly reveal a Z move than by showing it? No nothing, a Z move for every type. Wow, like you really didn't think, let's hype up a special kind of attack you can only use once in battle. And then the next trailer, reveal Child Captain Dialogue talking about what a Z move is, and then show off like one Z move. Y'all shoving freaking three Z moves down her throat. No, you're, you're right. They should, have they should have revealed the silhouettes of the Z moves. I'm sorry. The difference, man. Like, you being intrigued by the. Am I playing Pokemon Gold and Silver? I'm playing Pokemon Crystal Kaizo. If you guys are new to the stream and are wondering what's going on, here's the FAQ for the stream. Basically, I'm doing a challenge run of the hacked version of Pokemon Crystal. That makes the game a lot harder, um, which, for example, gives a level 120 Elite Four <laughs> that we have to beat eventually. Right now, we're on we're four gems into it. We're grinding for the way to for uh, the way to the fifth gym, which is a huge fucking water maze that I have to get through. Fight all the trainers, huge encounter rate, really annoying to get through. It's pretty fun. I have to grind everyone to like level 60 to get the fifth gym. Show the silhouette of the silhouette of the Z crystal. And the mystery of Sylveon and Mega Mewtwo, that's you going out of your way. Oh, dude, you're right. To reveal the Z-Moves, they should have just made, like, these epic, like, cinematic um, 3D animations for the moves. Wait, that's exactly what they are. <laughs> and to want to play these games, they're shoving these down her throat. They could have shoved Megalution down her throat and Sylveon down her throat. And in some world, hyped up Z-Moves, and this would have been the more interesting thing. In the same trailer. You guys remember, like, one trailer ago, I was just saying, wow, they're grubbing and all these crap. This is kind of an open region. I wonder. I'm excited to play these games. Look what you've done with everyone's expectations, dude. If this is how they give us Sword and Shield content... There's a title right there. It could be the best game ever. It could be a better story than Gen 5, better thrill than Gen 4. It could be the ultimate Pokemon game, but they'll crap it at us in these trailers, in these spoilers. Wow, like a mind spoiler in trailer, but it turned out spoilers. Oh, yeah. After that trailer with the Lowland Forms and Z moves, show me Wishy Washy. Team Claws are going to Pikachu. I won't lie, Team Skull turned out pretty cool. Oh, Plumier, yeah. Let's... Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? They introduced the boss in the same. Okay, whatever, man. I'm not judging them. This is the thing about Team Skull and Gozma be one of the smaller things. I guess. I guess now that you showed Gozma, like 10 more people have bought the game. Thank you very much. More regional forms discovered. Look at them throwing me out. Who's Who actually buys this game because they see that? Like, I don't understand. You don't have... What? It's literally a selling point of the game, my dude. Literally, the selling point of a Pokemon game is the new content. What the fuck are you talking? Why do you think people buy new Pokemon games, you fucking idiot? You don't have to, don't have to listen. Maybe with the nine tails, maybe they leaked it because they wanted to be the face. They wanted to like clickbait, like these Pokemon do. How you doing, Pasta? I wish I still did, man. Those views. Then I understand that nine tails probably got them a lot of views. Didn't reveal it correctly, not at all. But I understand that you revealed the executor, you can reveal nine tails for the extra sales. This is just spoiling for no reason. No one bought the game because of this thing. This that's the kind of.
Meow. This is the kind of Pokemon you find in the game. Where you're like, bro, there's an Alolan Meow. That's pretty cool. This has the complete opposite look because now we know it exists. I have to do a thing real quick. Hold on. Um, because I completely forgot if Magneton to check if I can auto fire Magneton if really if he learns a new move. Oh no, we're fine. Also, this video could have been like 20 minutes long. <laughs> And we're just gonna see it casually in the game and literally not care about it. I know this is Tyranitar too, but in a nutshell. What do you want? What do you want? It's not that simple. What it's do you want? What do you want? Dude, Ryan Gosling is so fucking hot. I have to go. <laughs> Like 70% of you guys, when you found me out, you didn't even catch it because it doesn't surprise you. Freaking drag type. And even better, guys. Even better. No one asked. No one said anything. You showed us me out. Why? What's up, Bernetta? Why? Why did you show us this? Okay, mm, the megas. The megas, they get you excited. I understand. You can spoil every mega in the world, and each mega will get even more and more sales as you go on. This didn't get you any more sales. You're just spoiling stuff for no reason. Why don't you just make up your mind and like reveal only five Alolan forms in total? Exactly being one of them. And tease each of them first. Why would you show me Alolan Marowak without making me want to see an Alolan Marowak first? It's like writing 101. Get people's attention, make them want to see something, and then show it. Like, look, he's a freaking fire ghost type. You reveal everything about him. If you just tease the silhouette right here, and people study, they're like, dude, the bone looks like it has fires on it. What is he gonna be? Ground fire? All kinds of speculation. And then you reveal Alolan Marowak, and it, when you see Marowak now, you're tied back to when it was teased and the speculation period. Instead, it's just Alolan Marowak. Look at the work and the concept put into this thing. It's a fire dancer. Look at the way he moves and all. But all that work goes into pure crap, and no one asks, but look who's here. A freaking surfing Raichu. Since it's, it's Raichu, the evolution of the mascot, maybe this is one of the five. But tease them first. I just don't understand them, man. Who, who that? Yeah, we care about this. You, you can tell them its ability. And this trailer comes out 10 days after the Alolan form trailer. Not even a full month. New Pokemon are ready for adventure in Sunny Moon. Freaking Crab Brawler, Sandy Gas. Yeah, reveal these, these pre evolutions in crap. But notice how no one really cares anymore. Let's see what the comments say. All these people complaining about Gen 1 is insulting the cancer Pokemon. Oh, wow. Look, it's someone speculating about what the other Alolan forms are. Interesting. Interesting. It's almost like revealing Alolan forms gets people speculating about new Alolan forms. Hmm. Hmm. I'll say that Alolan be fire type based on lava. People just want more spoilers because you revealed it in the most unsatisfying way by just spoiling it. That we just want whatever has our attention. Alright, get a special munchlax. Oh, they revealed Radita. I thought you were revealing you know, you know this Radita? I actually like the way it looks. I think it would have been so cool if you just opened up Sun and Moon and no one knew Radita existed and you find it in the wild. Doesn't the game look like it could be so much different if you knew nothing about it? Like, you don't even have to show this. Surgeon Pokemon have their own Z moves. Okay, throwing it down our throat. I know. I, Real it? quick, just because he doesn't mention it, because his comparison is shit, because he talks about X and Y for like five minutes, and then about this for 50. For the reveal cycle of X and Y, was the entire Dex like revealed, except for Mythicals, before the game came out? Because I know it was for Gen 5. I specifically remember that. Was it for Gen 6? Yeah, you, you, he knows you can just, like, not watch the trailer, right? Like, people do this. It doesn't matter what you think! Seems are cool. I get it. In Wi-Fi battles, it's pretty cool. It has more strategy and crap. But it was shoved down our throat. No one asked for it. They didn't want us to be hyped up for it. They just like get used to it. Mega evolution. You were interested in it? Forget about it. No, no, no. Mega evolution. They don't even know how to hype up their games. A freaking munch like. Oh, yeah, Snorlax and Z. We went from the blaze of night to Snorlax and Z. I mean, this was pretty cool here when he wakes up. My dude. This game doesn't even know what they're doing. If you play Ultra Sun Moon knowing nothing, it would be one of your most favorite games. It's just not true. Do you really play Pokemon this way? That whether or not it's your favorite game depends on if you were spoiled for it or not. That's so sad. Like, d nothing else in the game matters? Like, the fact that it had shit, a shit ton of unskippable cutscenes? The fact that the early game pacing was, like, really bad? The fact that the difficulty was, like, actually really good? None of that matters. All that matters is your first experience of the game and having that five-year-old moment of, like, Oh, wow, I've never seen this Pokemon before. Oh, gee, boy, I sure am enjoying my... Like, is that it? Is that all that makes a good Pokemon game for you?
wouldn't be as good as if they hyped it up to you like how XY did, but it would be way better than getting it spoiled to like this. Look at this. September 1. Just two more months. Two more months. Don't spoil anything big. Five days later, Ultra Beast and the 8th Foundation debut. Ultra Beast is one of the coolest things ever. They're alien, legendary Pokemon. We've gone through every single legendary. All the myths. We have the Musketeers. We have the legendary beasts, birds, Reggies. What more can we do? We have the genies. They come up with alien legendaries from different portals, from different realities. These weird like yeah, Ultra Beasts are cool as fuck. Why legendary. the fuck would you not reveal them? Reveal in your what? this is like one of the coolest aspects of your game. Why the fuck would you not reveal it? <laughs> The Lolan Radicate, thank you very much. Now I'm unbuying the game because of how that looks. Check out these version differences. Sun and Moon are setting day and night. Reveal the Aether Foundation find. Maybe you just want to show us tidbits from different parts of the game. Faba. I mean, I remember uh, at this point during the hype season, no one knows what else going on. They're like, Aether Foundation, I don't care. I thought Team Skull, like, who are these people? Do they work with the professor? There wasn't much care for them. Yeah, nobody knew what was going on, so they were speculating. Isn't this a good thing? Because they were lacking information. So every part of when they lack, when people lack information is bad because nobody knows what's going on. But if they have too much information, that's bad because they got spoiled. Them, right? But look, after all this entire trailer, I can show us Gladian, Dex, you and Cena. Help you guys are hype. Remember these guys from X and Y? Look how they end the trailer. QB01. Oh, come on. This is how it's revealed. I was actually gonna praise this. I was gonna praise this. I thought the way it ended is it shows that scene with the music where uh, he like appears when you're with Lucy meeting crap. QB01 introducing. Do you know how many mystery things there are in this game? Even more than X and Y. Way more than X and Y, dude. You have Ultra Beast. Wait, 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 wait. Stop, stop. Didn't they not even reveal that what an Ultra Beast is and the name and they only reveal, reveal it with QB01? Right? Isn't this a good thing in his mind? Shouldn't this be good? Isn't this kind of like revealing a silhouette? Say it's an Ultra Beast. What are these mystical creatures? Ultra Beast is like the craziest thing you can introduce. They're, they're invasive, legendary. They're not supposed to be in our world. It's, like, it's the coolest opportunity to hype up. Oh, look, September 6th, September 14th, more Ultra Beasts are here. Nobody says nothing. Game Freak, here's Buzzwell. It's a Game Freak on the other end. While people are trying to like find things to put in their thumbnails, drink. They didn't even, it. they didn't even put the, um, they didn't even give them like the name. Isn't that good? Game Freak's like, we need more trails, we need more content out there. Uh, guys, spoil like it rock. Extreme Eevee Boost. Oh, look, the squad is here. And then, they reveal evolved forms of the starter Pokemon. This is pretty cool. Remember when Quillian and Crapper introduced Quillian? Well, that's double the likes. Then a, a lot of the previous videos, even the one with Ultra Beast introduced. You see what this is a product of? Giving people the answer to something they're anticipating, rather than spoiling something they didn't know to anticipate. Evolved forms of starters. This is interesting, people say. Gets double the likes and views. You know why? Because they teased starter Pokemon and you want to know more about them. No, because starter Pokemon are like the most important thing of any new generation. Everyone gets super hyped about the starters. <laughs> you just say Mega Evolution's return? Shut the hell up. Oh, look at that. Ashman Ninja. Here's both Grimer and Mike at the exact same time. Not let me, He doesn't even look cool. He doesn't even look attractive to put to, to clickbait more sales. You don't even show Grimer first. And then like two seconds later show Muck. at the exact same time. I actually even, agree. Exactly like, wow, I think Hello, and Muck is fucking ugly. Exact same time. Show both of them. The full typing and everything. It's a Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Also, the typing of the Ultra Beast wasn't revealed. Or their abilities. Isn't this a good thing? Why does he not mention this? Hmm. 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 Introducing Olivia, yes, and Ilama, yes, and then dawn of the final month before the release. Discover the final evolution of the starter Pokemon. Why? Like, didn't you think back to why you didn't spoil the starters in X and Y season? People picked the starters and figured out the evolution for themselves. It was so freaking cool. There was so much to look forward to going into X and Y. But you have trust for Game Freak when you're watching these trailers. Like, hey, if they're gonna give us the final evolution of the starters, and they tease those ultimates, maybe there's so much content in these games. Oh my God! They and then they meet the Guardians of the Alola region. They're legendary, but nobody asked. This is what intrigues us. You don't have to. Who's buying the game now that you've? Un This is so dumb. They didn't reveal them. Wasn't this a good thing to not reveal them until now? Mass these three. That is why the things people are gonna be thinking like, oh, that's Tropical. I can't wait to visit these three mystery islands and meet their guardians. Didn't no, they reveal the wait. final starters of X and Y? I don't know. I don't know what because he doesn't talk about the reveal cycle there at all because the comparison is completely mute. So what the so mute. here? Here's Tropical on a boat. And its ability, and typing, and blue. Here's every single legendary in the game. And even that, because why not? If you want to show Tropical, use the Z move just because it looks flashy fine. Oh, and then because this is gonna get sales. They've given up on trying to hype people up. I can't imagine it, dude. You put this much work into Gen 7, into these games, the culture, the graphics. You said you worked as hard as you could. You weren't satisfied with X and Y's graphics, so you bumped up and tried to push 3DS to its limits. That's what they said. And then they hired the worst person to, to reveal all this crap. While Radicalist introduced Jelly Bean Watermelon. When it's the beginning of the Pokemon League. Take on the Battle Tree. Don't do it. Oh, Wally's here. Cynthia's here. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's not in the trailer. This is clickbait, dude. This is literal mis misleading. Isn't this. Isn't this what he wants? I'm so confused. Didn't this get like people super hyped up and speculating how they would feed like into the game and everything? I don't know. Thing. Right, don't do crap in these games. What they showed us here is all you get in the games. I'm glad I don't click anymore. This is dookie, dude. They're legit trying to spoil as much as they can to get your attention. This is like the opposite approach to X and Y. Your video title is literally Pokemon games are being ruined. <laughs> are you really? I don't. I don't give a fuck about clickbait. I clickbait on my YouTube too. I think it's like you just if that's your hustle, that's completely fine. But don't sit around and pretend like you don't clickbait. What's okay? What does your channel look like, dude? What does your channel look like?
Pokemon games are being ruined. Rant. Something's not right on this island. I tricked people with a fake 4chan leak. I can't believe you guys have done this. This is two months ago, by the way. Title of this video, Back to Die Again. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. This point. I can't think of what if you just put the silhouettes of these two and tease them. Two trainers you won't expect to meet on your journey. All the and then don't reveal in a trailer. Let us find who we are ourselves. All these things will add up as points of interest and mysteries you want to solve. There'll be so much speculation. They even show that we we battle them. Lit six Pokemon. Literally. Literally, this is everything they do in this game. And they spoiled it here. I would, if I was playing Sonic Yeah, Moon, but we didn't I, know that. I mean, it was shit that that's all they do in this game, but we didn't know that at the time. This is literally like hindsight, right? You realize this. Like, there was still speculation because nobody knew this would be all the reveal, right? I met Red and Blue. Literally, this guy's only idea for reveal trails is silhouettes. He has no other ideas. It's really sad. I'm really glad this guy wasn't in charge of the marketing, but I'm really glad. I, I'm, I'm excited that he speaks with such authority on it when he clearly has no idea what he's talking about. Without them telling me during the game, my mind would have been blown. But now it's expected. And expected in the most unhyped way ever. It was a little hyped because of the music, but that's it. That was the last trailer. That was the last one. This is their way of hyping themselves for Sun and Moon. Now that you've seen all the trailers, what was in the game that they didn't reveal here? Nothing. Nothing. Literally nothing. They didn't reveal all the trials. They didn't reveal all the um, Z moves, right? Did they even reveal the entire decks? I don't even know. I think they did, right? But didn't they do that for like every gen? Um... D they didn't reveal the champion. They didn't reveal the Elite Four. They didn't reveal in which order you would go through the islands, right? They didn't reveal um, any, like almost any of the story, I think, right? They didn't reveal Ether Foundation going evil. It got data mined a week before. What, what does that have to do with any literally anything? We're critiquing the 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 marketing rollout right now. If anything, that point is uh, that that's a point for them and not against them. Because with data mining being so prevalent, you ha like if you were going to be like, okay, everything's going to get revealed a week before, we might as well be in control of revealing it in a good way instead of it spreading on the internet, right? Then reveal Ultra Necrozma. Well, that that's usum, right? UB typings, Looker Quest, Lusamine Twist, Necrozma is completely not revealed. There's nothing. I'm thinking about it each time. There's nothing. Oh no, there's one more trailer. I was just gonna think. Wait a minute, they didn't reveal all the Ultra Beasts? Maybe, fine, there's one point for them. No, what is this trailer right here? More Ultra Beasts are attacking! They really, they really want to spoil this. Why can't I discover this for myself? Why? What do you think gives you the rating in your games? The amount of people who buy it or the people who play the game and they're like, bro, this was a fun experience. Here's Guzzlord. There's nothing left. There's... That's all of them. No, there's Cartana and Celesteela. Great on you, game freak. Two Pokemon that we're gonna look forward to meeting. That's what we're gonna buy Sun and Moon. I don't think they reveal those two. Oh yeah, give us a Lolan freaking Doug trio. So they give us UB03 Lightning and UB05 Gluttony and they make you think, wow, they didn't reveal four. So that's what I'm looking forward to when I play these games. It's like, and they don't even do crap in the game. This isn't even the Ultra Sun Moon version. I'm gonna look at which was one of my favorite parts of the game because I, I didn't really expect meeting these dudes just invading our, our region. But this is how Pokemon ruined Sun and Moon. This is how they did it. Pokemon Sun and Moon isn't bad. Pick up the game, give it to a kid who didn't see any of the trailers. Is this you a Pokemon stream or a shit on YouTuber stream? I mean, it can be both. That game. Fine. Yes. I need to do something while I grind, right? a little easy, but you're not gonna get lost. If they did this with X and Y, X and Y would not be liked as much. It's how you hype the people up. If you spoil everything, imagine you find a Final Fantasy comes they tell you everything that happens in the game. It's okay, I'm gonna buy it, you got my sale. I played it, I don't like the game. This is the freaking worst thing ever. I like Sun and Moon. That's because I'm finding my own ways to hype it up. I think back to the Alolan forms. I think back to it being like a vacation region. I'm like, you know, it's a fun adventure. Having trials to explore, having Team Skull pop up, and plot twist where Ghost Mode works for Lusamine is a good game. I don't even remember X and Y story properly. I just remember enjoying the game. Wait, he just told us what they didn't reveal about the game. <laughs> After asking what did they not reveal? Beautiful music and a mega evolution, but I especially think back to the hype season and almost take the hype season. Don't and thumbs down, Brigade. I don't care. <laughs> Just uh, don't, Brigade, okay? Chill. But boosts up my interest for the game. Sun and Moon was dookie, dude. You look at all these trailers and you're like, bro, if they reveal all this crap, if there's Ultra Beast invading the region, there's freaking Red and Blue in this game, bro, there's gonna be so much sickness in this game. I wonder what Red and Blue's gonna do. I wonder what craziness is gonna happen in the game. Literally nothing happens. It's not that Sun and Moon is bad, it's that they told us everything. I'm hoping they saw. No, 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 stop, stop. You just did the. You just flipped. No, no, no. It, you, your critique point was they don't do anything. But then you said it's bad because they revealed it. No, it's not bad because they revealed it. It's bad because they don't... Red and Blue were not bad in these games because they were revealed beforehand. It was bad because they didn't do anything. That's what was bad. That the Ultra Beast almost had no involvement with the game. That was bad. Not that they revealed it first.
the moon, and they compared it to the freaking X and Y speedback, and they saw how much they shook the audience. All Game Freak needs to do is reveal like one fifth of what they did for Sun and Moon, and raise mysteries like they did in X and Y. If they do that, this game might surpass X and Y, might do as well as like Diamond and Pearl. Hyped up to the right things. You see the mystery on the hills? Look how intrigued people have of that. That was good. I actually had this video idea in January of this year before Sword and Shield was announced, and the main thing that I wrote in all caps is, I swear to God, if in the first trailer, just don't reveal this, the legendary. That is the biggest thing people can speculate and theorize about. That's the one biggest thing. Until you give us something else to speculate about, that's gonna be the big mystery. So don't do what X and Y did, even though X and Y had a good hype train. That's why I also had to make a big presentation because they were shifting so worldwide release. So they're trying to make the game explode. So they made this big trailer for something like that. It's like a presentation. They couldn't leave out the legendaries. I was hoping so bad that they just wouldn't reveal the legendaries for Sword and Shield, and they didn't. The trailer came out, and it was exactly the way I hoped they would make it. So this is the one thing that's gonna decide whether Sword and Shield turns out to be a fun experience or no. not so fun experience. No, no, dude, stop, no. This is not the one thing that decides if Sword and Shield is gonna be good. What are you talking about? Oh my god. There's so much more to playing a Pokemon game than those little moments of like, oh, I've never seen this before, gee whiz. Like, there's so much more to playing fucking video games. Game that people kind of want to forget about. So far, they're doing right. Sun and Moon started the same way. They didn't reveal the legendaries. And it went from February 26th all the way to early May for them to reveal the first bit of information. So if when May hits, because Cork already came out and it's just a contest for naming the new steel move that does 140 and takes up half your health, it's kind of like mind blown. When that news comes in May and the hype train begins, what do they choose to give us mysteries one after the other and hype up what they're going to reveal instead of just spoiling anything they can in trailers is what's going to make the games. Come Ultra Sun and Moon, literally they clickbaited even more with Ultra Megalopolis. They didn't reveal an alternate Chrosma, which thank the Lord turned out to be my favorite part of Ultra Sun and Moon. The one thing they didn't reveal. I wonder why. Buddy. Because, no, no, no. Because it was good content. <laughs> Because it was good content, not because they didn't reveal it. Uh, I fucking hate spoiler culture so much. The hell is that? All Sword and Shield has to do is go back to freaking hiring whoever hyped up X and Y. There's a certain feeling that X and Y's release of just mystery and not knowing enough and wanting to know more. That they gotta recapture. These two, three months after the announcement comes, it's supposed to be sort of dying down because it just needs to be out there. The name Sword and Shield, like the name Sun and Moon. It's in May to November that they're gonna start dropping the real bit of information. And each time they do, I'll, I'll cover in a video, but that's what's gonna decide it, man. If May comes in, you freaking reveal is Sengen, the, the Sword Legendary, and Rainer, the Shield Legendary, Tight, Steel Dragon, Steel Fairy, Ability, Storm Shield, and Storm Spear. And by the end of the trailer, you've just spoiled stuff and given us nothing to speculate about, then I'm gonna feel really bad, dude. Alright, that's the end of the rant. I'm sorry it's not like the other rant where you can just listen and I'll just go on for a bit, but that this is the best way to explain what the big problem with Sun and Moon is. Is that the clickbait. The clickbait goes so far that when Ultra Sun and Moon came out, they put two different versions because they wanted more sales. They didn't want to make it just Pokemon Stars or Eclipse. They wanted two versions for maximum sales. If they can just go back to what they do with X and Y, they got their head on straight. Y'all about to be freaking mad hype for what they're gonna do. They can do anything. I don't think Armor Revolution is real. In best case scenario, they might bring back Mega Evolution since this is right next to Kalos. Anyway, that's it. You can watch the other rant. I think it'll be at the end of this video. Check the like button if you made it this far. I'm surprised you did. Let me know your thoughts. Because I, I like how we're pretending that uh, Galar being right next to Kalos is like canon now. <laughs> Whatever, dude. Oh boy, okay.